how I wish I had time. Many of you will see that you are the one that gave Satan the, the barrel, the double barrel that is using against your life. If circumstances are, if, if Satan can move through the circumstances and make you lose your anger, if a witch really comes on your case, you will not survive it. You will not. Press me. Press me well. For many years, you will not get the delight you seek. If you speak too much, then you don't understand warfare. Because one of the secrets God gave Israel when they were to conquer Jericho was to go by the way of an oath of silence. Things can stir you up and you're talking. You have lost. And you will go back and come around that circle again and say, you will meet Satan there again. If you talk too much, it means you are not strong. A certain couple, they had finished giving birth to all the children they want and uh, they didn't want more children. And suddenly the wife took it. So the daddy of the family now called and said, we want to take this child out. So we don't need children anymore. And it's not as if we're careless. We did due diligence to um, use all the prescribed con contraceptives. Is that what they call it? Contraceptives. But unfortunately, we don't know where this, this thing is coming from. So I, have, I had a ready-made Bible answer for their request, for their question. But I went further to press. And I saw the reason for which the conception happened in the first place. The conception was a miracle. And the reason why it was a miracle was because the child has a destiny so mighty. So I prophesied. They kept the baby. When the baby was born, the baby became sick. And the doctor said, this is not 50-50. We know that this child is going to die. They called me again. I said, Pastor, why, why are you suffering this? We came to you. Now, this, we don't need any child. We don't know where this one came from. And we want to have, just remove this child from... And you said that there is a great light on the child. That is why we kept See what we are involved. The man now told me, like, see, if the child now dies, that because of what I said, the wife has started liking the child from the womb. If the, child, <laughs> if the child now dies, this woman can't manage this thing. The doctors were no longer treating because they had, they said there's no need for that. They were no longer using their support systems because they said it's a waste of resources. It was when they removed everything. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Because for many of us here, you think that what, what uh, the result of elections is a product of census, ballot papers, polling units. That's what they taught you in uh, political science. <laughs> it's deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. Uh, it, 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 it goes to the realm of demons and water spirits. It goes to the realm of appeasing deities. So it's not your ballot paper and your voter card that can change. It's, it's, it's necessary for each and every one of us to be possessed of a voter card. I hope we all have voter cards. No, I'm not joking about that. You have voter cards, so I have mine also. We, just like the Bible said, bodily exercise profited little. Voter card profits little. But the game, the real game is played over and above the power of the card. But get your card and have your card, okay? Now, what I'm showing you here is that there is a wisdom. There is a wisdom that can keep a people bound. And, and that, <coughs> that wisdom is manifest through platforms like that. So if Satan wants to bind the nation, he doesn't visit everybody in that nation. He just goes to the gate of the nation. And what we mean by gate is the place where decisions are taken that are binding on every citizen. Now, Satan doesn't need to visit every household in order for him to exact control. He visits where? The gate. And what prospers in the gate becomes what will be called acceptable or not acceptable. I don't want to press for that. I would have shown you how human beings may think that their thoughts are independent. But their thoughts are a function of an intelligence that operates higher than their thinking faculty. And as, as intelligent as you think you are, the Bible says every son and daughter of disobedience is under the influence of what the Bible calls the spirit of the power of the air. It's a manipulating influence that operates in the area of the intelligence. And through your commitment to intelligent living, these you find compatibility with this entity. And everyone that has not yet known Jesus, unfortunately, is held sway unknowingly by this intelligence. Satan can sponsor you 
to preach success. We can make you have a, a Prado. What's the costliest location in Accra? It's, it's legal. He can facilitate a house for you in, that, in the heart of it's legal. Are you there? So that you can continue preaching that message. But the day you preach about the kingdom of God, because thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that Jesus said, is actually a declaration of war. When you say thy kingdom come, you are declaring war because you are introducing a new government. Meanwhile, there's a present government on ground. Oh, you know, are you, are you following what Ah, yes. There is no way you can say thy kingdom come without conflict. Anytime we hold a meeting that is very massive, people are here, people are delivered. Don't go and sleep, oh. Oh, that it spreads no further among the people. The authority, the authority of darkness that is in the district we located. So, oh, oh, damn it. <laughs> you are, are you the one? Then they will now look for a way to send a threat. And this threat can come in different ways. Maybe you just begin to explain financial drought, and I'm telling you, I've experienced all of these things. <laughs> Finances are just, no, ah, the graph is no longer okay. <laughs> I remember a mighty evangelist in our nation, he, he went to, there's a part of Nigeria where the number of witches, the population of witches is higher than normal people. <laughs> so he went to preach there. And then he now, under the unction, he said, if you are a witch and you want to surrender tonight, raise your hand. So they, they almost everybody in the, in the crusade ground. And then Satan spoke to him. Satan spoke to him instantly. He said, if you leave me alone, I will leave you alone. If you leave me alone, eh? what did Satan tell him? <laughs> if you leave me alone, what? I will leave you alone. <laughs> and he, he was actually interested in that deal. He said, you will leave me? He said, yes. If you just leave me, I leave you. So the way he was supposed to pray for those witches to deliver them, because Satan proposed that it will be better for you. Okay. He now meandered. He didn't, he didn't follow the prayer the way he would have done. Do you realize that when he left that crusade ground to go, he started punching, pow, and the cast him assaulted. So he now, when he survived, he said, so, <laughs> so you don't know how to keep it. Satan cannot keep a deal. You don't agree with him. So when it comes to threatening you, rise up and become more vicious, more strange. That's how we do. That is spread no further among the people. We we'll hold meetings, and then when I come back home, everybody in the house is sick. My wife is sick. Children are sick. People living with us all are sick. Everyone is sick. I said, none of you will take drugs. This sickness is not onto drugs. <laughs> My son said, that said he was sick. I came. I touched him. Touch him, touch him the third time. He stood up, became well. I started touching. That sickness was not medical. It was a threat that any time you say that kingdom of come, it is a declaration of war. If you are not ready for the war, don't say thy kingdom come. Because the moment you say that, get ready. the next thing will be a threat that will come in form of a war. Satan doesn't know what you're afraid of, so he will test you, he will test your finances. It will test your circumstances. It will test your marital life. Then he will see the one that will shake you to your marrow. Then he's going to camp there. He will camp around that one that shook you to your marrow. That it spreads no further among what? The people. I've taken record, a very meticulous record of my ministry life. Should I tell you a few things in my diary? Okay. Let me read some out experiences that I had because I went for crusades. I, I just told you one. I came back home one of those times and everybody at home was sick. That means as we go to attack Satan, he looks for a close relative, close person that is close to you, that if the person is down the thing will affect you. And maybe the person is not as strong as you are. So he now channels the attack on the person. That's why if you are a father or a mother of a household here, it is in your interest to raise all your children to become intercessors. You afflict them with prayer until they cannot but become prayer people because a, the strongest chain will break at the weakest side one of those days i came back home this is my own personal experience you know i'm an open book if i do something wrong i will tell you if i miss it i will tell you that is how me i will preach if you miss it too, i will tell you you have missed it you miss it the only one that is above us all is god all right if i miss it i would say hey listen to me once upon a time I, that's me for you. went for a crusade came back home any small thing will generate christ and god began to teach me that this is one of the manifestations of the devil's threat. Are you there? 
It is only a man that is not keeping record of his spiritual life that will do something great for the kingdom and not wait to see where the devil wants to come from. The devil will look for an inroad. The reason is because he doesn't want what you are doing to spread anymore among the people. There was one of those times I came back home and I just noticed that I did not like my wife again. I'm telling you, do you understand? Your pastor is an open book, me, here. But I didn't tell her. <laughs> she said, what? And I went, do you understand what I'm talking about? I went back to God. I said, how do we solve this one? The reason why I give you examples about my practical life when I preach is because I've had a lot of experiences that I took to God and God solved it. That is the source of your wisdom and that's what you are going to pass on to your children. That I was in this situation before. This is what the Lord taught me. But when you don't have encounters and experiences with God, you will not have anything to pass on to the upcoming generation. You are going to be empty of wisdom because you are not interfacing with God to take you beyond the limits of your human thinking, your human wisdom, and to bring you into his own wisdom. So as I began to pray and pray before God, God now said to me that the cure of this circumstance is to love her with your will, not with your emotion. Will it, I will. And then operate by will. When you begin to paddle your canoe by will, a time will come, the waves will support you. That's what it taught me. So I've seen all kinds of manipulation. I've seen, but you see, the Sanhedrin said what? That it spreads no further among the people. So when any kingdom thing begins to take place and people are beginning to come into the knowledge of God, they are beginning to be taught how to exercise their spirit and they are beginning to build capacity. Satan knows that if he allows you people in the next five years, ah, you will cause an irreversible problem. Listen to me. Apostolic strongholds like this, they don't grow numerically easy. No. What we count is not number. What we count is the capacity of an individual saint in the room that has been trained. That's what we count. So we don't count number. Because I've seen places where there were 9 million and they could not move, shift the principality that was, was over that place. 9 million. 9, Vichy, 9 million people. And the principality was comfortable. When they finished, it was still ruling. So it means that that 9 million doesn't add to spiritual politics. It doesn't change the spiritual climate. It's a wasted number. But Apostle Paul raised a son called Timothy, one man, and released him into the city of Crete and told him to raise, to appoint elders as he himself was appointed. It means he was once an elder in one of the outfits that Paul established. And now he has been isolated to do apostolic labors and to follow the ritual the way he saw his master do it. He was one man he left in Crete to colonize the place. So we don't count number, we count capacity. What can you do? What can your prayer do? Can you bring the demon that is haunting your family, been haunting you guys for 20 generations? Can you bring that demon down? Came back from a crusade and I noticed that the financial drought was heavy. So I've seen financial threats, threats. I've seen marital threats, I've seen all kinds of threats. All right, so as, as of today, pastors that have betrayed me are 22. I mean close stabbing. It's 22. The number now has added up to 22. <laughs> uh, Pastor Dame, have you, uh, how many have you seen? These are threats. And the intention of the principality is that it spreads no further among the people. So how do you survive? When princes are arrayed against you, I need to tell you that the easiest way to secure a promotion in the spirit is to be in the midst of spiritual warfare. The safest place for you to be in spiritual warfare is at the front lines. It facilitates your promotion easily. People that won't fight, eh, they will remain in that state until old age. If you see people growing in the anointing, growing in authority, it's because they are agents of warfare. So we are trying to defeat that wisdom of darkness, which is set up to ensure that the fortunes of Christ in the territory no longer spread among the people. There is no spiritual presence of darkness that you see that was occasioned by darkness it was occasioned by a human being that created a pathway for that spirit to come into the realm and so just in case in your family the most predominant presence is darkness it means that there are people that are educated as to what to do to bring darkness into the realm don't look for the spirits look for the people they are human beings but they have education because the bible says that the people that do know their god they shall be strong and the, the bible didn't say the people that know jehovah Say they are God. They are God. 
So anyone that knows the God of Nogopo is a strong man. And he will do exploits. Well, we're the only ones that are not taught how to do warfare, how to interface with the spirit that supports us. We were not taught. All we are looking for is breakthrough. Go, go to Nogopo. The people that served Satan there, they are not looking for breakthrough. Think about it. We're the only people that are misplaced. We don't even know. A man that knows Satan where well, is satisfied in spiritual knowledge. He doesn't need to go to school for people to bring money to him. People will go to Harvard, go to Oxford and invest money in pounds and bring to him in the village, in Volta. Yes, they'll bring to Because anywhere spiritual things are active, financial and material things will come anywhere, whether divine or demonic. So he, he, in the eyes of that priest, he, you are wasting your time in the University of Ghana. Yes, he said, you see this? <laughs> said, what is she doing there? Are you there? I have a very powerful friend. He is so good. I don't want to describe him too much so that you will not know he's the one I'm talking about. He was somewhere in the United States, in school. And his mom just woke up in the morning and said, this is my son, won't he come back again? That was all. She went and concocted and sent two spirits to bring his boy back. He was almost graduating. He left school and came back and could never go again till today. Do you know what? His mom is dead. But this guy cannot sit down in one place till today. The person responsible for his journeys has died. The implication of the transaction that was done, the demons are still watching over it to perform it. What the priest in Ogopo is saying is when you are finished University of Ghana, you will discover that your situation will not change because we have locked you at home. Go and improve your brain. Have you read your Bible? He said he that falls in the day of adversity. Why, why, why did he fall? His strength is small. So you, you don't even know your state until there is adversity. Then we can measure your level of strength. This scripture I'm bringing to your knowledge, which is initial preparation for warriors. And the reason why we should be prepared for war is that anyone that says thy kingdom come is already in war. So Ephesians begins by telling us that we wrestle. He is not telling us that we are about to wrestle. He's not telling us that somewhere when you are 55, you will wrestle. He said right now, it's not obvious, but you are involved in the wrestling. If you are going to stand against the devil and win the devil, you, know, you must know what it means to take advantage of the law. So when we say you should take advantage of the Lord, we mean a few things. How many of you have read the book of Isaiah chapter 53? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were here. So what Jesus did was that everything he suffered has translated to currency. It can be used for transaction. Just like Bitcoin is, is currency, but it's not money. Mobile money is currency. It is not money. But you can use it for transaction. You can use it to pay for something. Is that true? It's not a legal tender. It's not Ghana's legal tender. Ghana's legal tender is the Ghana cities. But in the same Ghana, mobile money can be used to buy things, to buy credit, to pay for stuff. You can even translate it to money. Now, so the Bible says he was wounded and his wounds, his sufferings translated to currency. It said with his stripes, ye were healed. And the healing is in the past tense. Ye were healed. The reason why people can be healed is because they were healed. Was the price for their sickness was paid. So in order for you to be strong, you must know how to take advantage of the Lord. You must know the things that the Lord has accomplished on your behalf. Knowing the things that have been accomplished on your behalf puts you in a place of advantage to challenge the devil. The reason is because Jesus is the overcomer. Jesus has already defeated the devil. We don't need to fight a fresh battle. We can all anchor our strengths upon the victory that Jesus has won already. We can anchor our strengths on that. And then our situation will always be victory anytime the devil rises up against us. So our call into spiritual warfare is not a call to fight a fresh battle. It's a, it's a call to maintain the peace. Before we came here today, we passed through the barracks. We saw the barracks at the left. And there was one soldier with a gun. There's, it's not war. Ghana is not at war. 
but we need to be militant to keep the peace and if there is something that comes to disturb the peace we we fight against it so that peace can be restored so that's our job we 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 mobilize against uprisings so that the state of peace which is the state of victory that jesus handed over to us can be exercised so in order for you to do this you will need to be strong in everything that jesus has already accomplished because those things are registered in the spirit realm as currency and you can use them for transaction to put the devil where he belongs a certain couple they had finished giving birth to all the children they want and uh, they didn't want more children and suddenly the wife took it so the daddy of the family now called and said we want to take this child out so we don't need children anymore and it's not as if we're careless we did due diligence to um use all the prescribed con contraceptives is that what they call it contraceptives but unfortunately we don't know where this this thing is coming from so i have i had a ready-made bible answer for their request for their question but i went for that oppress and i saw the reason for which the conception happened in the first place the conception was a miracle and the reason why it was a miracle was because the child has a destiny so mighty so i prophesied they kept the baby when the baby was born the baby became sick and the doctor said this is not 50 50. we know that this child is going to die they called me again i said pastor why, why are you suffering this we came to you now this we don't need any child we don't know where this one came from and we want to just remove this child from and you said that there is a great light on the child that is why we kept see what we're able the man told me like see if the child now dies that because of what i said the wife has started liking the child from the womb if the child, <laughs> if the child now dies this woman can manage this thing then i went back to prayer and said oh great one i have in a fix then the great one came back in the, in the night and said the destiny of that child is stronger than death so the doctors were no longer treating because they had they said there's no need for that they were no longer using their support systems because they said it's a waste of resources it was when they removed everything that the child became normal because the devil will fight anything that looks that has the potential to challenge his stakes in the territory he must have peeped and said ah because the devil is a peeping spirit and what it means to peep i hope you know the scripture i quoted to come to that conclusion isaiah chapter 8 when they shall say unto you seek unto wizards that peep so satan has the capacity to peep and what it means you know when you're watching a movie for instance and i visit your house and i come to the sitting room and i see a scene in the movie can i tell the whole story of the movie there was just a scene i saw so satan peeps satan does not see he just he sees a scene then he tries to make sense out of the scene he has seen most of the time he's wrong except you open your mouth to not educate him you know when he came into the garden of eden and met eve he said did god say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden that was wrong that was accurate that was not accurate but he was looking his data bank was limited because he's a peeping spirit he needed eve to now support him to give him full information for him to understand the context of what was happening if we allow the devil with the information he has alone he cannot fight you successfully and win but he needs you to put you in a situation where you start speaking if you speak too much then you don't understand what because one of the secrets God gave Israel when they were to conquer Jericho was to go by the way of an oath of silence. Things can stir you up and you're touching. You have lost. And you go back and come around that circle again and say, you meet Satan there again. If you talk too much, it means you are not strong. You are not strong. If circumstances, are, if, if Satan can move through the circumstances and make you lose your anger, if a witch really comes on your case, you will not survive it. Press me. Press me well. For many years, you will not get the delight you seek. Because I have learned from the Lord. There is a time to speak and there is a time to keep silence. Without you arming the devil with information, his peeping abilities give him limited range of insight. So Satan comes with questions. Did God say? What did God tell you? 
what did God say to you? Do you still remember in Bethlehem, Ephrata, when the wise men came into the territory? Huh? And they, they asked Herod, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his time in the east and I come to worship him. Herod didn't have the answer to that question. He now called the scribes. He said, you guys are the ones that write the sacred writings. What is the answer to this question? The scribes had the knowledge because they are the custodians of revelatory powers. They say in Bethlehem, Ephrata. For those it is written by the prophets. You see, it was the scribes that informed the principality of the location that the thing will happen. And from that point, Herod now decreed that they should kill two children, two years and under, that were born. According to the time that he diligently inquired from the wise men, Satan will weaponize every information that you give him and use it to contend with it. How I wish I had time. Many of you will see that you are the one that gave Satan the, the barrel, the double barrel, that is using against your life. So if we are kingdom men and we are going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom of God, we must be taught warfare. Oh, that's, that's how I grew. I grew by war. You will remain in this level until you begin to learn the ways of warfare. Most of us, weapon, we give Satan the weapons that he uses to fight us. When they shall say unto you, seek them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and mutter. Mutterings are enchantments, giving instructions to demons. What was the counsel he gave them? He said, should not the people seek unto their own God? Should we need to pass from the living to the dead? Because it's through the instrument of a familiar spirit that necromancy is possible. Necromancy is the ability to consult the dead through the instrumentality of a familiar spirit. That's what he described in the scripture. He said, should not the people seek their God? And in this place, he didn't say Jehovah. He said, their God. Still recommending that you should be strong in first spiritual trick is when you know you are under attack it is a luxury that you cannot afford to lose your temper write it down those of you that easily get angry you, you don't understand it will set you back many light years behind are you there have you written that down what did i say Losing your anger is a luxury that you cannot afford during a time of spiritual warfare. Especially for a woman, I don't want to go into details yet. Some, there are women that want to conceive or ladies that want to get married. Anger. If you still trade in anger, you are not ready for a miracle. And I cannot explain tonight, I don't have time. You are trusting God for a breakthrough and you still have time to be angry. Are you there? Number two. During times of spiritual warfare, you must pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. When you pray in the afternoon, you pray at the tent, you pray in the night. You pray in the afternoon, you pray at the tent, you pray in the night. Pray in the afternoon, you pray at the tent, you pray in the night. Continue like that until the season changes. During the time of spiritual warfare, reduce your eating to the barest minimum. The reason behind fasting, the idea of fasting, is starving your flesh so that you can be more stuffed in your spirit, more sensitive in your spirit. Because you will need directives from God in a situation of warfare for you to escape or for you to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. So you need to be in a state that God can reach you even with the slightest whisper. How many points did I give you there? In the place of prayer, as you exercise your spirit in prayer, what you are looking for is an inspired word from God. Not just the scriptures. The one God says speaks into your spirit. An inspired word of God. That will become the sword of the spirit that you use to defeat the, the dragon. Shut down anger. Anger gives Satan an outlet and announces his dominion over your life. So he will have power over a decision that you need intervention the most. Satan will have power over it. And that's how he, he, he structures delay. That's how he facilitates delay in the life of many people. What you miss because of your anger, what you miss, there are some things you miss. If God doesn't help you, you can't get it again. What does it mean to be meek? It means you are not easily offended and you do not easily offend. That is a warrior. That's the state of a warrior. Put him under pressure. He's not offended. Insult him. He doesn't reply. Lie against him. He will not even, he doesn't feel there's any need for him to defend himself. Continue with your lie. And if you see a man that can allow you lie against him and you keep quiet, it means he's deep with God. He's deep. He knows that your lie cannot produce anything that will hinder the purpose of God. 
it's a sign of death. But when you see a man that is accused and is everywhere on social media trying to defend himself, he has lost God long ago. What he is is a parrot. We are going to pray. Because in the days to come, the Lord will teach your hands to fight and your fingers to war. Everything went against me. People that were close to me, they turned their backs on me. It was Satan. I knew it. I knew that they were good men. And I did not take them for their actions to be equivalent to their actions. They told me about it. It's on record. But I told God that if I'm the only man standing, I will still be standing. Because you didn't talk to them, it was me you appeared to. And I will never deny that. Even if you, they take a gun and put on my head, I will say you appeared to me. I have seen spirits come to my room. They were sent to destroy me. The people that sent the spirits were destroyed. Not once, not twice. Can we pray in a moment? So when the devil comes and threatens you, and you ignore him and you are more radical to advance the kingdom of god he will leave you for a season it means his deception did not work if he notices that you are not yielding to his deception he will leave you for a time and go he will enter the lab to develop another weapon with your specification in mind so that the next time when he comes he will get your attention if satan is on your case it means he has hope that he will prosper can you can you prove to him that he cannot prosper can you receive courage from the Lord? Courage from the Lord to stand in faith, to stand in your conviction, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the situation. Receive courage. Receive courage. Your conviction is true. The things that God has told you is true. Receive courage from the Lord. Receive courage. We will not yield any ground to the devil. We will not yield any ground to the kingdom of darkness. The devil cannot have your daughter. He cannot have your son. He cannot take your husband. He will not win. Hey! Abo si le da la kwa. Alelo lo bosakaya. Le konde baba la tule baba kala. You will not profit from us. You cannot gain ground from us. Release your captives in the name of Jesus. You will gain no further ground. Lift up your hands, all you get. And be not lifted up your everlasting door. And the keys of glory is a coming. Resist him steadfastly. Resist him continually. Resist him again and again. You have no chance here. You have no ground here. says that men will despise a thief if he steals only to satisfy his hunger but when he's caught he shall restore sevenfold and he shall give all the substance of his house when he's caught he shall restore there is a law of restoration in spiritual warfare when you catch the thief you cannot demand restore <laughs> Restore. 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 Oh, yeah. Can you demand for restoration right now? Say it, Mama. Say it, Mama. Say it. 
You can't take away my joy. You can't take peace away from my family. You can't have my daughter. You can't take my son. You can't take my job. It's not given unto you to rule over me. I am born of God. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook and we are on Twitter. Thank you.